we've been asked to graph a trig function and uh, I, I want to show you how I go about graphing trig functions uh, I think it's kind of unique the way I do things sometimes so um, we've been asked to graph 3 y equals 3 sine of x from negative 2 pi to 2 pi now when I look at a, a trig function um, if you've got any algebra background at all we've got stretches and shrinks and we've got horizontal translations, vertical translations, and reflections. So I look at this formula and I've got a multiplier term. Okay, a multiplier term. And that's going to be a stretch. And in the case of a trig function, a vertical stretch. That's a vertical stretch. And in trigonometry, we call that an amplitude shift or an amplitude change. Okay, and um, so what you need to know anytime you go to graph a function is you need to know what's called the base graph. You need to know basically what does this guy look like if there are no transformations. And uh, in this case the base graph is y equals sine of x. It's going to start at 0 and it's always going to go to 2 pi. That's its period. That's how long it is. And this little uh, this little point in the middle is going to be at exactly pi and then this is going to be at pi over 2 and this is going to be at 3 pi over 2 okay and so I look at this graph and I look at this and I say what's changed well it's going to get taller it's going to get taller by a factor of 3 well this maximum occurs at 1 and this minimum occurs at negative 1 so if you know that picture in red you can create this picture here it's supposed to start at 0 well this has not moved that starting point so it's going to start at zero it's going to end at two pi and it's going to have a zero in the middle of pi okay those haven't changed it hasn't been shifted left or right up or down it's only had this multiplier here this is called the amplitude term amplitude term okay amplitude term that affects the height of the graph. Well, the graph normally goes to a height of 1. It is now going to go to a height of 3. And it normally goes to a valley or a negative height of negative 3 or negative 1. Now it's going to go to negative 3. Okay? And so what we have is we have our sine graph. It's going to look just like this. Okay? Likewise, uh, they told us to do from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. And so if they told us to go from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, we have to create a, 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 a mirror image of this, an, another copy of this. So it's going to start at negative 2 pi. It's going to go up to a height of 3. It's going to go back to 0. It's going to go down to negative 3, and it's going to go back to 0. And so we get this nice cyclical um, sine wave. So it goes up and down and up and down. This is always going to affect the height, the amplitude of the graph. And as we do a few more graphs, I think you'll start to see what I mean by that. Now, uh, if you have not done this in algebra, where you've actually had to uh, stretch and shrink and reflect graphs in algebra, you really should go back and review that first. It makes trig a lot easier when it comes to graphing. So here we've been asked to graph y equals sine of 1 half x. Now, um, in algebra, uh, I always tell students, you know, when you have something multiplied over here, it affects the y term. It's going to be a vertical stretch. This is grouped with x, so it's going to affect the horizontal. Okay, it's going to affect the horizontal. Now, in algebra, you need to know this a little better, but in trig, we get to cheat a little. The period of sine and cosine is always going to equal 2 pi over b. And this multiplier is b. Okay? So the period is 2 pi over b. So if this was a 1, the period would just be 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. But this is a 1 half, which is going to be 2 pi over 1 half, which is 4 pi. So what this means is our function normally and again, you need to know your base graph. The base graph of sine always looks like this. And this is going to be at 2 pi. Okay? This is saying now it needs to be at 4 pi. So it's been stretched horizontally. So what I'm going to do is this starting point is going to remain the same, 0. This ending point is now 4 pi. 
our base graph, the middle point, this, this point here is always in the middle, so it's between 0 and 2 pi. Well, in this graph, the middle point is going to be between 0 and 4 pi. Okay? And then, of course, this peak is going to be between these two points, and the valley will be between these two points. Uh, what's the peak? Well, the amplitude of this is normally 1, and the valley, or the lowest point, is negative 1. This has not been changed. It hasn't been stretched vertically, so this is still going to be at 1, and this is still going to be at negative 1. Okay? And so our graph is going to look like this. It's going to have been stretched, stretched horizontally. This is a horizontal stretch. Okay? So kind of a fun little problem. Um, let's try another one here. Uh, y equals 2 cosine of x. Y equals 2, a cosine of 2x. Cosine of 2x. And again, the period for a cosine graph is 2 pi over b, periods 2 pi over b, and in this case this is b, b is our, and if you look in a trig book, I'm using standard trig notation here, any trig book is going to say y equals a cosine bx, it's going to look something like that. So a is the amplitude, that's the vertical stretch, and b is the period modifier, it's going to be the horizontal stretch, and so this time I get 2 pi over 2, which is just pi. So now we've got to look again. What is our base graph? What is our base graph? Is y equals cosine of x. Now cosine is a funny little animal because it actually starts at the maximum and goes down and back up. The minimum is at negative 1 and it occurs exactly in the middle. Okay, so if this is at 2 pi this is at pi and this is at zero. Okay. What we're seeing is instead of taking this long to make one cycle, it's now going to take this long to make one cycle. So instead of going to two pi, where's it going to go to? It's going to go to pi. And that's going to be there. That's going to be there. And the minimum is going to be halfway between. Okay. And so where's the zero going to happen? It's going to happen halfway between each of those. And so we get this nice, cute little shrunken cosine graph. Okay, that's it. That's the graph of cosine 2x. Okay, so that seems not so bad. I think I can live with that. Um, what if, uh, what if I um, was to ask you something different? What if, what if I um, was to ask you something like? Um, the graph below here. We're just going to do something pretty simple here. Um, I'm going to combine these two, okay? 5 cosine 1 half x. 5 cosine 1 half x, okay? Um, what does that mean, okay? That means if you take your base graph, your base cosine graph starts at 1 and it takes 2 pi it's a, a time unit, really, when you think about it. It's how long it takes to make one cycle. So 2 pi, pi, and 0. It's a height of 1 and a valley of negative 1. Height of 1 and a valley of negative 1. Um, what does this do? Well, this stretches it vertically. So instead of a height of 1, it's now going to have a height of 5. And this, 1 half, is going to be a horizontal stretch. And how we know that is the period of sine and cosine is always 2 pi over b, which is 2 pi over 1 half, which is 4 pi. Okay, 4 pi. Okay, so what that means is uh, our cosine graph is going to start at the maximum, go down, and come back up, and it's going to now end at 4 pi. So the, what is the maximum? Well, the maximum should be 1, but this is going to stretch it to make it 5. So it's going to start at 5, and it's going to end at 5, 4 pi units later. And where's the minimum? The minimum is always exactly between the two maximums. So this is at 0. This is at 4 pi. So at 2 pi, we're going to get a minimum of negative 5. Okay, a minimum of negative 5. 
And then this zero occurs exactly between the max and the min. So that's going to be here. And this zero occurs exactly between the min and the max, which is going to occur here. And what we have now is we have a nice cosine graph. If we can draw this out, we get a nice cosine graph. Okay? So a nice cosine graph, or as nice as I'm going to draw anyway. So that's how we graph sine and cosine functions. And uh, hopefully uh, from what you've done in class, this can, can kind of help you move along the way. I think it's something that takes a little experience. If you're able to do this, then, then you'll be able to do what we do next. And uh, please look for that video where we talk about how to get from a graph to an equation. If you have any questions, please let me know.